Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Let's rise up as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for our Bible study. Thank you because you brought us together. So that, Lord, you teach us what other people are ignorant of. I will pray, Lord, you drive away ignorance and darkness from everyone in Jesus' name. I will pray as we study your word and know the truth. We pray that this revelation will prepare us for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We are back to the book of Daniel chapter 12. In Daniel chapter 12, we are looking at it from verse 4 through to verse 13. Please open your Bible as we read together. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the age. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood two other, other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on, the, on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man, clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river. How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I had the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and he swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time and time, son and half. And when he shall have accomplished the scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? In verse 9, and he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up. And sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. And the abomination that make it desolate set up. There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy Lord at the end of the days. As we come to this final chapter, of Daniel, and we come to the final verses of Daniel chapter 12. You understand that we're not looking at the final prophecy, the end time prophecy of Daniel. And these words are started with verse 4. It says, Thou Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Which is telling us that the precious words of prophets revealed unto Daniel. They were not understood by many people, by both the Jews and the Gentiles, even in his days. Because he was told to shut it up, seal it up. Take the key away, the key of understanding and the key of interpretation. And even Daniel himself did not fully understand. And Daniel said in verse 8, I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? He said, I saw it, I knew it, I heard it, and it was revealed to me. But the point is, I didn't understand. And many people still today do not understand. In fact, we are told in verse 10, look at verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. 
If you link up those things together, the wicked will do wickedly. And the wicked, none of the wicked will understand. That means that the wicked people, they lack understanding. And because of their lack of understanding, that's why they're wicked. If they understood the end of all things, if they understood the prophecy, if they understood the revelation that God was revealing unto the man of God and to the men and the women of God today, if they understood the end of prophecy and the end and the purpose, post of all the revelation. They wouldn't be doing the wicked things they were doing. And that shows you too that today, anytime you do anything wicked, anything sinful, anything unscriptural, it's because you do not understand the revelation of the Lord. The revelation of the word of the Lord. Lack of understanding brings sinful practice. But then we're told that you must seal up the book because it will not be understood and would not be appreciated at that time. Yet you must keep it safe and preserved as a treasure of great volume. That we do not understand something doesn't mean that we throw it away or we reject it or we say, well, it's of no use, it's not precious. It's precious. You may not understand how many things the prophets of old prophesied about the coming Christ, about the salvation of the Gentiles, and about the life that the sacrifice of Christ will bring. And those prophets of the Old Testament did not understand. Even though they did not understand, they still prophesied. Even though they didn't understand, they still preserved the watch of the Lord for the people to come, for the generations to come. And that should be our attitude. You read something in the Word of God, you don't understand. You go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, make me understand. That you don't understand doesn't mean that you are going to throw it away. And then it says, at the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, seeking knowledge, and knowledge shall be increased. Then it says, uh, look at that verse 4, it says, uh, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. And it's at that time of the end that people will be seeking the knowledge of the world, the revelation of the world, the wisdom in the world, and how to prepare for those things that are coming at the end of time. And what it says, they'll run to and fro. Many people will be running to and fro, seeking to find out what does this mean? What does this imply? How can we understand the application of this in our lives? Some of them will understand as they run to and fro like that, but some of them will not understand. We're looking at Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8, and I'm reading there from verse 11. In Amos chapter 8, verse 11, Behold, the days come. That's talking about the latter time, the latter days, the end of time. Exactly the time that Daniel was speaking about. And the time has even started upon us already. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. A famine. Of hearing the words of the Lord. The scarcity and the lack of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea. And from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the words of the Lord. And shall not find it. They'll find the written word. But the key of understanding they will not find. That's why Daniel was told, shut it up. As the world approaches the time of the end, many will seek to understand these great mysteries of the kingdom, that which is sealed till the end of time, or till the time of the end, will be understood by God's favored people, only by few people that will be granted the inspiration, the illumination, the revelation of the Spirit of God. The wise shall understand. Come back to Daniel chapter 12, and look at verse 10 there. Daniel chapter 12, and we're looking at verse 10. Verse 10, that even though some people will not understand, yet the people of God, precious people of God, cleansed people of God, purified people of God, and the people that give their lives unto the Lord fully, and they have the inspiration, illumination, instruction, influence of the Spirit of God, they will understand. Daniel chapter 12, verse 10, many shall be purified. And made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But who will understand? The wise shall 
understand. And as you think about, you know, the few people that understand all these prophecies of Daniel, all the prophecies of, um, of Revelation, all the prophecies in First Thessalonians and Second Thessalonians, all the prophecies in the Old Testament and the New Testament, as you think about the few people that understand, and if you happen to be among them, you are among the wise, and we praise God for you, for us in Jesus' name. The things of God which are hidden in our skill to one generation will be made clear and will be understood by the diligent seekers in a later generation. Think about that. The words of God, the revelation of the book that is sealed up for one generation, for the generation of Daniel and for the centuries that followed after Daniel. And even for the first century in this, our dispensation of the Jewish people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, it was hidden from them. They didn't understand and yet for a later generation and the generation that is living today, thank God, we are getting to understand and we shall understand more in Jesus' name. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ himself was telling the disciples in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, I'm reading from verses 16 and 17. Matthew 13, verse 16, but blessed are your eyes for the see and your ears for the hear. For I say verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men, think about that, not only Daniel, not only a few prophets and righteous men, but many, many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them, telling us that those prophets of the older generation, they didn't understand. I know what some people do. Whenever they don't understand something like that, they throw it away. They say it's of no value. In fact, sometimes you will fight it. Sometimes they will forcefully eject the people that are even prophesying or preaching or proclaiming all those things because they think if they don't understand, it cannot be a revelation coming from God. But we are told that many people of the prophets of the Old Testament and righteous men of the Old Testament they didn't understand, but all the same. It was still the word of God. Let's look at Daniel chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 26. Daniel chapter 8 reading from verse 26. You'll find that even Daniel himself all the revelations he was given. He didn't understand everything at the first time. But even though he didn't understand, he did not throw away the revelation. Daniel chapter 8 verse 26. And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days. Afterward, I rose up and did the king's business. And I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. But none understood it. You know what we're learning from this? We're learning from this that even Daniel did not understand everything. And even though many people around him did not understand everything, yet he prophesied. What a great lesson. You don't limit your preaching to only what you understand. You don't limit your prophecy to only what you understand. You don't limit your proclamation to only what you understand. He didn't only prophesy, he preached, he preached. You don't limit your preaching to just what you understand. You know, there are some people, they say, I don't understand about this repentance. What if somebody has done this, this, and that? Has lived a very dangerous life, and you tell him to repent. Hey, preach it, whether you understand or you don't. I don't understand this restitution. And you know, if somebody has done this, and this, and that, and is going to make restitution, as you're looking, you're reading from the Bible, from Genesis, from Leviticus, from Numbers, from Acts of the Apostles, from Matthew, you restitution restitution i don't understand what if it will bring this and this and this pressure and problem upon the people don't worry about that preach it you know daniel he didn't understand fully and none of the people understood and yet he proclaimed and yet he preached and yet he preserved the word of god and you know that's the danger for the people who are preachers for pastors and you know those who are leading churches sometimes the preachers will preach and their people may not understand even basic salvation what jesus said ye must be born again nicodemus did not understand and jesus said are you a master in israel and you know not these things but all the same 
even though the people may not understand, preach it, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There are people that will just keep silent on sanctification, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. They say, you know what? People don't understand that. This Adamic nature, approaching it and cleansing it and purifying us and living a holy life from inside to outside. People don't understand. And because people don't understand, they limit their preaching. But Daniel said, the Lord told me, the Lord revealed it, and whether I understand it or not, I'm going to preach it, I'm going to proclaim it, I'm going to preserve it, I'm going to protect it to you. You protect the word of God. Whether you understand or you don't understand, prophesy. Understand you don't understand, proclaim it. Understand you don't understand, still preach it. Understand you don't understand, preserve it. Understand you don't understand, protect it, and practice it, and bring it into performance in your life. And say, Lord, although I don't understand, yet I'm going to do what Daniel did. I'm going to preach and preserve and protect the word of God. We're looking at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 44. Luke chapter 9 verse 44. Let these sayings sink down into your ears. Everything you have heard from the word of God. Maybe your brain doesn't understand. Let it sink deep into your heart. And deep into your nature and deep into your lifestyle too. Let these sayings sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of the, of men. But they understood not this saying. They understood not this saying. And it was hid from them. And yet Jesus said, I know you don't understand, and I know you will not understand. It's sitting away from you, but let it sink so deep in your heart. You're still going to possess it and preserve it, even though you don't understand. I'm looking at John chapter 10. John chapter 10, we're looking at verse 6. It's not everything that Jesus said, that Jesus revealed, that they understood. But they were so faithful. Matthew recorded everything. They were so faithful. John recorded everything. They were so faithful. Luke recorded everything was so faithful those new testament writers recorded everything even though they didn't understand how we are to be faithful like that too that the totality of the word of god from genesis revelation that we come to study it and we come to preach it and we come to preserve it whether we understand or we don't understand john chapter 10 verse 6 this parable speak jesus unto them but they understood not what those things they what what things they were which is speak unto them. But thank God they wrote it now. Thank God they preserved it. Thank God they protected it. Thank God they preached it. Thank God they still told us that this is what he said. We don't understand what he said it. We can't figure it out what it means, but he, they wrote it down. And that's the faithfulness of a real child of God. In John chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 7. John chapter 13, we're looking at verse 7. You don't know it, you don't understand it, still possess it, and still proclaim it, and still preserve, protect it. John chapter 13, verse 7, Jesus answered and said unto them, what I do thou knowest not now. But all the same, submit yourself. All the same, give yourself. All the same, accept that this is the will of the Lord. And this is what he wants done at this time. What I do now, you don't understand. But thou shalt know hereafter. Chapter 12 of John. John chapter 12. I'm reading there from verse 16. These things understood not his disciples at the first. These things understood not his disciples at the first. That's not peculiar. You read something in the word of God, you don't understand. You hear a particular message from the pulpit here, you don't understand. That's not peculiar, you don't understand. And then you see something, you read something from a sad description, you don't understand. That's not peculiar. Or you hear something as we're preaching and preaching and preaching, going through the whole Bible, you say, I don't understand that. All the same, possess it, preserve it, protect it, hold on to it, and say, Lord, I'm going to practice, I'm going to do it, even though I don't understand this or the words of the Lord. That's the advantage that that great man of God, Daniel, that he had, that even though he did not understand, he did not despise the word, he did not neglect the word, he did not reject the word. He knew at the time appointed, the divine revelation will be found to be of great value and of great service to God 
God's people. That's why we're looking at this uh, message today. We're looking at the final end time prophecy in Daniel. And we're going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the preservation of the sealed revelation. It's sealed, it's closed up. People don't understand yet. It is it is preserved. The preservation of the sealed revelation. Number two, the purifying of the saved remnant. There's going to be a remnant. There's going to be a remainder of the people. And those, uh, the remnant, they're going to be purified and purged and tried and made white and made holy. Number three, the perseverance till the saints reward. Persevering until the saints reward. Number one, the preservation of the sealed revelation. Let's come back to Daniel chapter 12. In Daniel chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 4. Daniel chapter 12, we're looking at verse 4. Here he tells us, But O Daniel, uh, but now Daniel, thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, and the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river, and one said to the man closed in linen. You see, these are heavenly agents. These are agents from heaven. These are personalities from heaven. These are supernatural beings from heaven, angelic hosts from heaven. One on the one side and the other on the other side. And then they saw the man in linen. Linen is just a white a white cloth. And it says it was white all over. And this describes someone that has superior knowledge. Supernatural knowledge. And one of the men told the other one that is this supernatural beings ask him this one in leaning and ask him how long shall it be to the end of these things and then you have the answer in verse 7 and I had the man clothed in leaning which was upon the waters of the river uh, when, that is he had authority over the river and over everything created sin that the Lord had made and as you look at this and check off from part to part of the Bible uh, you will be know that this pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ the one that has authority the one that has power and he raised his two hands to heaven and then he swore by the Lord that there shall be for a time that's one year and times that two years and a half three and a half years and then he says when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people he's referring back now to the great tribulation of three and a half years when the antichrist the prince that shall come when he will scatter the power of the holy people of the children of Israel then it said all these things shall be finished. That is all that Daniel was prophesying about. Everything will come to a climax and a conclusion when you have the end of the three and a half years of the great tribulation. And let's look at that one by one. And let's look at Isaiah chapter 8 and we're looking at verse 16. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 16. And we're told Daniel was told to seal up the book and seal up the memorial of the revelation until the time when the key of understanding will be given to the people who are seeking to know the depths of revelation of the Lord in Isaiah chapter chapter 8 verse 16 bind up the testimony seal the law among my disciples my followers the people who are learning to follow after me seal it up among them that only them will be able to understand but the other people will not be able to understand we're looking at Habakkuk chapter 2 Habakkuk chapter 2 and I'm reading from verse 13 you'll see what the Lord was telling in the prophet and what he told other prophets too and this is also in relationship with what he told Daniel seal up the book and then Daniel was inquisitive he was inquiring he was finding out how will this be how long will this take Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 13 it says behold is it not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire? And then it says, and the people shall be we shall weary themselves for for very vanity. It's saying that even you know these people of uh, the children of Israel they weary themselves. But look at verse fourteen: for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. 
It says that even though they labor, and then the time will come when people are running to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased at that time now. Knowledge, the knowledge of the glory of God, and the knowledge of the coming glory, the knowledge of the reigning glory, and the knowledge of the final glory of Christ reign upon the earth. It will fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. When we're told in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 7, we're looking at verse 25. Daniel chapter 7, verse 20. You'll see that Daniel, he always sought, he sought to find out what does this mean? How can I understand this? He didn't just, he not just give up like that just because, you know, he had been told, seal up the revelation, close the book, shut it up. That's because the people now will not understand. All the same, he still was inquisitive. Even though they don't understand, I want to understand. I pray that will be your attitude. I said that will be your attitude. You know, other people will say, Book of Revelation is too hard, it's too tough to be understood. Other people will say, Daniel chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9, 10, 11, 12, very hard and tough to understand. And, and they, they, they give it up and they never study. But in the case of Daniel, he said, I'm still searching, I'm still seeking. And I want you to know, I want to see the meaning of what the Lord is revealing unto his people. And when you have that heart, a seeking heart, a searching heart, a heart that wants to understand. Understand, the Lord will give you understanding in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Daniel 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and it shall be given unto his son until, listen to this now, this is what Daniel had been told, and this is what he was still told in chapter 12, that that priest that was to come, the anti Christ. He'll try to change the laws. He'll try to change the times and the customs. And then it will be given to his son until a time, one year, and times, two years, and the dividing of time. That is one, uh, three and a half years. That is, for that period of time, that will be the time that the Antichrist will be tormenting the people until he crushes and scatters the power of the holy people that is of the children of Israel. We're looking at Daniel chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 13. Daniel chapter 8, verse 13. Then I had one saying speaking, and another saying said unto that say, unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and a transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the horse to be trodden on the foot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days. I, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And then he tells us in verse 15, And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought the meaning, and sought the meaning, and sought the meaning. He said, yes, I saw the vision. I had the vision. I had the revelation. But I didn't really understand all those the numbers that were given of the thousand days and 260 of the 300 days and all that. I didn't understand. And I began to seek for the meaning before the Lord. And they were told, then behold, they stood before me as the appearance of a man. Verse 16, and I had a man's voice voice between the banks of Eli, which called and said, Gabriel, that's an angel, like angel, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid, and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, understand, O son of man, for at the time of the air shall be be the vision. He was told that this will be for the time of the end. Look at verse 19. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last edge of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. Be. It was that understanding that made that man to live a life to the glory of God. In fact, the Lord was saying that this will be the time of the Gentiles. Uh, the time of the the time of the Gentiles is the time when the Jerusalem is trodden down, and the and the Gentiles will be reigning, ruling over them until that final time when Christ will come as their Messiah, and He will deliver them. Let's look at Luke chapter twenty-one, verse twenty-four. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Here he tells us, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, 
and shall be led away captive, talking about the children of Israel, the Jews, into all nations. And Jerusalem, the capital city of the Jews, shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Uh, the prophets did not fully understand, as we have already read from the word of God, the divine revelations given to them. Even after diligent search and inquiry, they still did not fully understand. And look at First uh, Peter chapter 1, and I'm reading there from verse 10. First Peter chapter 1, and we're looking at verse, uh, we're looking at it from verse 10. And you'll see that those prophets, they didn't fully understand, and yet they declared the word, they preserved the word, they proclaimed the word, they protected the world which is telling us uh, the commission the Lord has given us to honestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints and every child and every man and every woman every minister every member of the church should do that whether you understand fully or not you know that this is the word of the Lord preserve it protect it and preach it we're looking at first peter chapter 1 verse 10 it says of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you searching what or what manner of time the spirit of christ which was in them did signify they were searching what does this mean and what is the spirit of the lord signifying what's he revealing and telling us when he testified before the sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall follow unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves. They couldn't understand fully because it was not unto themselves. They couldn't get the very depth of the meaning of the revelation because it was not for their generation. They couldn't get the deep significance of what the Lord was revealing because the meaning, the interpretation, the fulfillment was not for their own time. It was for the time to come. And because it was for a further generation, a future generation, and the generation to come, that's why they couldn't understand unto whom it was revealed that not unto them, but unto us they did minister these things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Think about that. That even the angels themselves, even beyond the prophets, that the angels were designing to understand the deep significance and meaning of the revelation that the Lord was giving them, uh, was giving to the prophets. But even the angels that were searching, they didn't fully understand. But all the same, now these things have been fulfilled in our own lives. And we need to treasure them and preserve them and protect them and keep on proclaiming them and preaching them. Though they didn't fully understand the most sure word of prophecy prophecy the holy men of god still speak as were moved by the holy ghost the revelation was not just for their generation but for generations to come till the end of time they were faithful they were faithful they were faithful and we ought to be faithful today i said we ought to be faithful today and you know some people they read something in the word of god they don't understand they say forget it all those things in the electricity i don't understand forget it all those things in the songs of solomon i don't understand forget about it and all those things in isaiah chapter 40 to chapter 66 i don't understand everything they say forget it all those things in ezekiel chapter 1 ezekiel chapter 40 i don't understand and because they don't understand they say forget it not only that they forfeit it they forfeit the blessing, they forfeit the fruit, and they forfeit all the great preservation, the things the Lord has preserved for them just because they didn't, they didn't understand. Some people forget, some people forfeit, some people fight. They fight against it. And you find some members of the church, thank God not this church, because a commitment in this church, one and all, young and old, is that we're going to accept the totality of the word of God. Am I right? And we defend that word. Honestly, contending for the faith was delivered unto the saints. And we give our preachers, our pastors, our overseers the liberty to preach the whole word, not, not hiding anything from us, so that they'll be able to say, I'm pure, I'm free from the blood of all men because I've not shared to declare unto you the whole counsel of God. But you know, in some other churches, they don't only really forget it or forfeit, they fight it. They say, No, preacher, we don't understand that. We don't understand that. And because we don't understand it, they fight it. But over here, we don't fight the word of God here. Do we fight against the word of God? 
I said, do we fight? No, we say that's the word of God. I don't understand it today. Maybe I'll understand it tomorrow. I've not got it today. Maybe I'll get it tomorrow. And I've not experienced it today. Maybe I'll experience it tomorrow. Because of that, we just say, Lord, speak. Because your children are hearing. We don't forget it. We don't forfeit. We don't fight it. But we just want to fulfill, perform, practice the totality of the word of God. We must declare it then and defend it and preserve it. All the counsel of God. Whether we understand fully or we do not understand, lack of full understanding on the part of anyone must not make him to diminish or to destroy any part of the word of God. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7 and verse 8. And you will see that the people of old, the reason why they were precious before God is because they counted the word of God precious. The reason why God favored them is because they were faithful to the word of God even when they did not understand. They said, I've never seen that. I don't know about that. But the Lord is saying it. Because of that, I need to yield and surrender myself to it. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. God warned him of things not seen as yet. God warned him of things that never, never happened yet that rain will come it will bring a mighty flood and everybody in the world will drown because of that flood there was no rain before that time no deal before that time and even though he had never said anything similar to that and the lord said it he moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house and by by the which he, he condemned the world and became heir, became a person that inherited the righteousness, which is by faith. What, what, a, what a wonderful scene that whatever you understand, whatever you don't understand, just say, Lord, that's your will, that's your word, I don't understand. I'm not going to wait until I understand. I, I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine now that the doctrines of the word of God that are preached in the Bible, that we have been preaching in this church, if we waited, if our preachers waited until everybody understood, until that newcomer, they understood everything. Until that ignorant person, they understood everything. Until that backslider, they understood everything. Until that careless, prayerless person there understood everything. If we waited, we'll never teach the truth. But it's because we're not waiting for the careless. We're not waiting for the sinful. We're not waiting for the newcomer. We're not waiting for the children. We're not waiting for the men or the women. We're not waiting for the members to understand. We just keep on preaching, keep on preaching, keep on preaching. That's how we come to the understanding of the word of God. And I pray that that courage and conviction and that faithfulness among our preachers will continue in Jesus' name. When God warns Noah of things never seen yet, yet he went ahead and did what the Lord told him to do. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed and he went out. Tell me the rest. He went out not knowing whither he went. You know what he wait, What if he waited until he understood, Lord, I don't understand this. I don't know where you are leading. I don't know where I'm going. How can I do that? You don't wait. That's the word of God. And when the word of God says, this is what you do. You preach it, you perform it, you practice it, you preserve it, and you protect it without ever waiting. And that was the problem of those uh, children of Israel at the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many things he said, they didn't understand, and were still bound in their tradition. And he said, you have had days of old, but now I say unto you. And then he told them the new revelation they were to have. And they shook their head and shook their mind and shook their shoulders and threw everything away and say, we don't understand that. And because we don't understand, we're not going to do it. That's why they lost out. I pray that you'll not lose out in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verse 27. Acts of the Apostles, I'm reading from chapter 13, verse 27. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because, because, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath day, 
they have fulfilled them in condemning him. Because they do not understand. Uh, can, we, can, can we lend in this? You know, brothers and sisters, uh, there was something that God told Abraham. I, I don't think Isaac will understand. Take that little boy and they go and sacrifice him for me. And then Abraham said, Abraham did not understand. How could he understand? This is the child the Lord had given me. And see what the Lord is telling me to do. And then he, sacri- he was to sacrifice that child until the voice of the Lord came and said, Abraham, Abraham, now I know that you love me and fear me because you have not withheld from me your only son. And then he provided the ram to be a replacement. But the point is, I seek did not understand. I seek did not understand. But he didn't fight. He didn't argue. He didn't rebel. He didn't revolt. He didn't run away. You know, that's what the members of the church should be. How can you understand everything I do, everything I say, every step I take? I'm talking about myself now as your pastor and as your father in the Lord. How can you understand? You know, I move to the left, I move to the right. How do you know what God is telling me? And then you say, I don't understand. All the same, don't, don't worry about that. You understand later. Don't fight. Don't quarrel. And don't, don't beat your head against the wall just because you cannot understand. And you know, when Noah was building that ark, and Noah, when God just God spoke to Noah. He didn't speak to the wives of his children and to those children that he is building the ark. Building the ark. Daddy, what's happening? A rain is coming. A flood is going to come. It's going to swallow up and drown the whole earth. They couldn't understand. Yet they followed. Yet they followed. Don't don't wait until you understand everything. And when I come on here and I preach the word of God to you, and I declare and I say, Thus says the Lord, and I read it to you black and white. And I say, This is what you do. I pray God will give you the grace. I say, God will give you the grace to be able to obey. You know, sometimes familiarity brings contempt. Familiarity brings contempt in the sense that because you come here almost every Monday and you come here almost every Sunday and then you see me every time and then we declare the word of God. If you are not careful, the word of God becomes so familiar to you. You say, I don't understand. And then you almost make yourself my equal. As if, you know, it says something I don't understand. And then you stand in the way. And then you say, Pastor, you will not pass this way. You are not going to do this one because this one I don't understand. But thank God, I'm going to do it all the same. I said I'm going to do it all the same. And I'm going to preach it all the same in Jesus' name. I pray that God will give you the humility to accept the revelation of the word of God, whether you understand or you don't understand. I'm going to point number two, the purifying of the saved remnant. The purifying of the saved remnant. We're coming to Daniel again. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. And I'm reading from verse 8. Daniel chapter 12. We're looking at it from verse 8 now. And I heard, but... I understood not. I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, you'll be purified. Many shall be made white, you'll be made white. And tried, and tried, and tried. Do you know that you are going to be tried? I said, Do you know you are going to be tried? When the Lord says, I stand up, and I don't know the reason why to stand up, that's a trial. That's a test. When the Lord says, sit down, you don't know why you should sit down. Everybody is standing up and he says, sit down. You don't know why you should sit down. And that's a trial. That's a test. And when the Lord said, keep quiet. And when you think, I must be talking now. I must say something now. I must say no. I must oppose this. I must fight this. I must uh, kind of struggle against this. And I was saying, keep quiet. You don't understand what is going on now. That's a test. And when you pass that test, purification will come. Holiness will come. Sanctification will come. But the people that are saying, no, I don't understand. I'm not going to keep quiet. I don't understand. I'm going to, you know, talk. I'm going to fight. I'm going to oppose this. I'm going to, you know, walk against this. I'm going to pull this apart. I'm going to, you know, pull this one down because I don't understand. Those people never grow. In fact, at last, they're going to backslide because they find themselves fighting against the Almighty God. But it says, go that way, Daniel. For the words are closed, are closed up and sealed till the end of time. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do how? Wickedly. But the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall. Tell me out loud. 
you know, I, I've just seen some people that come to our church here and they're not born, born again after three years of coming, five years of coming, seven years of coming, and they still do wickedly. And it, they're regular at the Bible study, you know. But their lives show that they do not know the Lord. And you preach something very serious, revelation on the final judgment of God. And you'll still be playing their tricks and playing their pranks. And you know, it's like the word of God is not touching, and they still do wickedly, even with almost seeing the literal fires of hell burning, and they're almost entering in like this, and they've been in church for ten years. And you say, But why? Because they are wicked, because they don't understand. And even though they are the Bible study, the key of understanding, the key of revelation, the key of knowledge is taken away from them. And it says they will keep on doing wickedly and they will not understand. Only the wise, but the wise shall understand. I pray you will understand. I said, I pray you'll understand. You know, when somebody comes in here, he's been coming just for about three weeks or four weeks now, and he understands salvation already. And he understands that we should not continue to live in sin. If any man is born of God, he does not commit sin. He understands that already. And something that somebody coming for seven years has not understood, he has been coming for only two months. He understands already. He's seeking for sanctification already. He knows already without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. He understands that already. He's sanctified already and he's saying, Lord, I need your power, the Holy Ghost. And then the people who have been there for about 13 years, 14 years, say, what's your problem? You've just come for about two, three months, and then you're so passionate, and you're just saying, fill me with the Holy Ghost, baptize me with the Holy Ghost. I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to run for you, I want to preach the gospel for you. Say, what's your problem? We have been here since 1990, watch. And then we're still here, we don't, we're not as serious as that, don't mind them. Those are the wicked people the Lord is talking about that the word of God to them means nothing and it says the wicked shall not understand but thank God I will be among the wise that understand in Jesus name you'll be among the wise in Jesus name but the wise shall understand let's look at Daniel chapter 11 verse 35 Daniel chapter 11 we're looking at verse 35 purified and made white in verse 35 and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white and even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed. Those people that have been purified in Zechariah chapter 13 verse 9 Zechariah chapter 13 verse 9 and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and I will try them as gold is tried they shall call on my name and I will hear them I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. Those are the people that are going to be purified, purified because of the great tribulation they will seek after the Lord and the grace of God and the mercy of God and the compassion of the Lord and the love of God will come to them and purge them, save them, sanctify them, make them holy, make them white as white as snow. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 Behold I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in, behold, he shall come. And says, says the Lord of hosts, but who shall be able, who shall abide, who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and a fuller soap, and he shall see it as a refiner, and pure Purifier of silver, it shall purify the sons of Levi. It shall purify, purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, and that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. He'll purify, and when he purifies, then we'll be able to offer unto the Lord a real good sacrifice. I know what Daniel did before he got all this understanding, which is now revealed unto us. Daniel sought to understand God's plan and God's entire purpose for God's people, for Israel, the holy people of God. Other people, the wicked, they don't they are not even interested in understanding, but thank God, our interest is understand the word of God, and we're going to understand 
return. And God always honors the favored, beloved prophet. And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the end, till the time of the end. The prophecies of Daniel were not fulfilled until after his lifetime. Think about that. The prophecies of Daniel, they were not fulfilled until after his lifetime. You know, sometimes uh, you go somewhere and then you're preaching salvation. See, uh, you know, repay, turn to the Lord. And if you turn to the Lord, God will save you. And then they're just looking at you like this, and nobody bulges, and nobody changes, and nobody repays, and everybody just goes their way. And then somebody comes to you and he says, Why are you still preaching this salvation? It's not working. Nobody is listening, and nobody is accepting, and nobody is repenting, and nobody is having a new life. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whether they will hear or forbear, declare the word. And Daniel declared the word and declared the prophecy. Whether the people understood or the each understand. You know, sometimes we are preaching holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. As we are preaching holiness and heart of flesh, a heart that is soft, a heart that is yielded, a heart that is humble, a life that is obedient, a life that is loving, a life that is innocent and new, enduring, separated from the world, and totally set apart unto the Lord. The people just, you know, many of the people here, they remain worldly. What they practice and what they principle and they are hard hearted, they have the stony heart and you preach every time that the Lord will give you a heart of flesh and the Lord will take away the stony heart and he'll give you the heart of flesh he'll subdue you, crush that uh, stubborn heart and then he'll renew you and make you holy and pure and righteous through and through and then the people still behave the way they used to behave and they act the way they used to act and they're still hard and somebody will tell you, hey pastor are you still hammering on this holiness Nobody is listening. Nobody is accepting. It doesn't matter whether they listen or they don't listen. Preach it all the same. Proclaim it all the same. Preserve it and protect it all the same. Because without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And when the day of judgment will come, all those people, they'll be guilty before the Lord because the Lord, you heard it over and over and over from my faithful servant. But we are not going to be like the wicked in Jesus' name. That even though some people are stubborn and rebellious, and they will not yield to the word. And we faithful preachers of the word will keep on preaching it faithfully. Every time and every day. I pray you will be among the wise in Jesus name. And in the case of Daniel, he just kept on doing what the Lord told him to do. The Lord said, go thy way. That means continue your work. And go about your usual work. We are to keep busy in the Lord's work. Living the fulfillment of the end time prophecies in God's hand. Because it is yet for a time appointed. During the great tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, many shall be purified and made white and tried. This purge purified remnant of Israel shall be saved. But in our own case, we don't need to wait for the great tribulation as members of Christ, true church, to be saved, to be sanctified, to be poured, to be pardoned, to be purified by faith in the cleansing blood of Christ. We can be saved and sanctified by faith in the cleansing blood of Christ. We can be pardoned and purged and purified, made righteous and ready for the rapture of the saints. Today, we can have that grace upon our lives, and we're going to have that grace in Jesus' name. And let's look at Titus, Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2. And let's see the provision the Lord has made for you and made for me. You don't have to wait for the time of the great tribulation before that purifying, that sanctifying, that cleansing, that purging can come upon your life. In Titus chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 11. It says in verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. It's appearing to you today. And I pray you'll accept it in Jesus' name. In verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live. How do we live? Soberly. No frivolity. No carelessness. No deliberate premeditated sin. No presumptuous sin. You live soberly. And righteously and godly when in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and the Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from how much of iniquity? All iniquity and do what? Purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. In First Peter chapter 1, First Peter chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 14 First Peter chapter 1 we're looking at verse 14. It says as what kind of children? 
Tell me out loud. Uh, you know, there are some people that make themselves rebellious children, disobedient children, stubborn children, stiff-necked children. Uh, that is not right. That's not right. To hear the word of God over and over and over. The spirit of God speaking to us and the love of God speaking to us. And the blood of Jesus Christ ready to cleanse and ready to wash and ready to purify. And yet to remain rebellious and unrighteous and, and disobedient. That's not right. That's like the devil kind of making the ear death and making the heart stubborn to drag that individual to hell but we're not going to be children of hell in Jesus name as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance but as sin which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be ye holy for i am holy and if ye call on the father who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work pass the time of your sojourning here in what in fear not in stubbornness but in fear tremble for as much as you know that she were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ the precious blood of Christ as of a lamp without blemish and without spot which means then this is what cleanses Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 21 Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 21 the study of the word of God should profit us. The study of the word of God should purify us and cleanse us and make us righteous and make us holy and make us focus on the Lord. We shouldn't become, you know, so familiar with the word of God and so familiar with the personality of God that we come before God and then it's like we're not paying attention. He wants to cleanse us. He wants to make us pure and make us righteous, make us holy, prepare us for the coming of the Lord and then we we'll just do like those religious people that go to church but they get nothing out of church that should not be and it should not be in jesus name in second timothy chapter 2 verse 21 if a man therefore purge himself don't, don't wait until god comes to you know use the fire and the rod and the chastisement do it yourself once you see that something is not right like in the morning you go before the mirror and then you see that something in your face is not all right or your ear is not well combed or your dress is not in the right position when you see that in the mirror you correct it immediately you don't want to go out like that you know dirty and unkempt and untidy you want to shape up and and, you know, feel, and look right. And the same thing spiritually. Who wants to see any blemish and see anything that is not proper? If a man therefore purge himself from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. You will not be among the people that say, no, I don't accept sanctification. I don't want to, you know, get so too deep in the Lord. I just want to be coming to the church. I don't want to become, you know, so committed and so sanctified and so holy and so pure. But look at this, that if a man therefore purge himself from all these things, it shall be a vessel unto honor and it will be sanctified. If he's not sanctified, how is he going to be a vessel unto honor? Do you want to be a vessel unto dishonor? Tell me out loud. No, you want to be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and prepared for every good work. In verse 22, flee also youthful laws, but follow righteousness and faith and charity and peace with all them that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. We're looking at uh, the third point now. As we come to the third point, we're looking at the perseverance till the, till the saints reward. We're looking at Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. And I'm reading to you from verses uh, from verses 12 and 13 and see what the lord is saying unto daniel what wonderful words and beautiful words at the end of the life of daniel he had lived a wonderful life an uncompromising life a prayerful life a faithful life a holy life a righteous a pure life and now at the end see what the lord was telling him daniel chapter 12 verse 12 and blessed is he that waiteth and coming to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days the lord 
Lord was telling Daniel that, you know, it's going to take some days before all these things are over. There will be the great tribulation. And then there will be the cleansing of the temple. There will be the establishment of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. The millennial kingdom. And the people that are just stable and solid and steadfast until the very last day when Christ will set up his kingdom. How blessed they will be. And how fortunate they will be. And how rewarded they will be. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. He said, Daniel, all this things is going to take time. Once the abomination of desolation begins, and once the, uh, you know, the Antichrist will sit upon the temple and declare that he is God, a lot of things are going to happen. And you're going to be calculating time and times and half a time. You're going to be calculating months and days. And then, until the final day when Christ will be king indeed. When he'll be the king of kings and the lord of laws. And then blessed is he that waited until that time. Or the people that endure to the very end. It says blessed will they be. Then he said I about you Daniel but go thy way till the end be. For thou shalt rest and shalt stand in thy lord in the days that is in the end of the days. The lord is saying that we should endure to the end. We're going to to endure till the end. That no matter the wind that may be blowing, and no matter the storm, and no matter the waves, no matter what may be coming on the earth, we want to endure till the end. In Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, from verse 11, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many, but thank God they will not deceive me. Because it doesn't say they will deceive all. Did you say they will deceive everybody? No, just many, just many. And I'm not going to be among the many. You will not be there in Jesus' name. Well, if you don't read their books, if you don't listen to their tapes, if you don't attend their meetings, if you don't investigate, you don't become curious, what are you doing there? And you know that what we're doing here is enough for you. What we're studying here is enough for you. If you're not, if you're not going astray to all those uh, their meetings, it says over here, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Thank God, doesn't it love for everybody? It's not the love of everybody, it's the love of many. But and I will not be among those people. My love will not wax cold. I said, My love will not wax cold. But he that shall endure until when? Until the end, the same shall be saved. Let's look at Luke. We're looking at Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. Endure to the end. Endure to the end. Remain till the end. Luke chapter 21 from verse 34. It says, and take it to yourselves, lest at any time, any time, any time. You know, carelessness can come any time. And sometimes it is easy to start a bad practice. But it's very difficult to break it once it becomes a habit. And sometimes something that is of no consequence, you're not gaining anything from it, just a bad habit. You start it. And then you continue and continue and continue until it becomes a terrible habit that is difficult to break. Be careful. That's why the Lord is saying, take it to yourselves. Because you can sleep away like that and just sleep into hell. Because of that, take it yourself. Let's at any time your heart be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness. Begin to act like a drunken man, not having his senses correct. You begin to act like a drunken man, intoxicated with ideas, intoxicated with self, intoxicated as with wine. And then you begin to do some extraneous eccentric things that should not be done in the presence of the Lord or in your life at all, in your community. It says, lest it appears you have a charge to suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unawares, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I pray you'll stand on that day. Hebrews chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 36. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. We're looking at it from verse 36. In verse 36, for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the 
promise. You have done the will of God. You are staying with God. You are abiding with the Lord. You need to continue patiently, perseveringly. In verse 37, for yet a little while. And ye that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, not by the flesh. The people that live by the works of the flesh become unjust. But the just, the justified, the saved, the born again, the children of God, they live by faith. Remember faith? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And when we say you live by faith, it's not that because I know it, tell me, show me that if I do this, that's the consequence. Then, that's the only time I'll, that's not faith, that's not faith, that's walking by sight. When God called Abraham, he didn't know where he was going, but he still went. And he didn't say, because I don't understand, I'm going to oppose it, I'm going to fight, I'm going to, you know, make a cross against that way. It will not be done. That's not faith. When you don't understand, like Noah did not understand, because God warned him of things not seen as yet. And Abraham, he didn't know where he was being led to, but he still fought that's faith. And the just shall lay by faith. Listen to me. If you understood everything God understands, then you'll be God. You'll not be a human being anymore. And God understands more than you understand. And he knows more than what you know. And if he tells you, my child, my son, my daughter, here is what you do. Faith means, God, I know you are God. I don't understand. I'm a human being. You know more than I know. I'm going to follow. That's the just. That's the justified. That's the righteous man. That's the real child of God that takes his place at the feet of the Lord. And he says, you are Lord. I'm your disciple. I don't know everything that you know. But because you said so, I will do it. That's faith. The just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, because I don't understand, because I can't see, because I can't feel it, because it was never done like that before. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Listen to me. If in your life, whatever you do, God abandons you to yourself. Because you're no more walking by faith. You're walking by the flesh. You're walking by sight. You're walking by your little peanut brain. Because of that, God leads you to yourself. And he says, I don't have any pleasure in him. Leave him alone. I don't have any pleasure in him. Let him do whatever he wants to do. And God doesn't speak to you anymore. Doesn't direct you anymore. You just, you know, use your peanut brain. You're just here and there, here and there, putting your feet everywhere. And, uh, you know, some people are praying for you and say, God, look at him. Look at her. And God says, I've left him alone. I don't have any pleasure in him. Well, what about that? I'm coming back to that uh, Hebrews chapter. Chapter, Hebrews chapter 10, but I'm going to read something to you in Hosea chapter 8. Let's look at Hosea chapter 8, Hosea chapter 8, and I'm reading verse 8 unto you there. Hosea chapter 8, when God says, I have no pleasure in them. Hosea chapter 8 verse 8, Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. When you're in, it's no pleasure. When you are not walking by faith anymore. When you are just by yourself. And you have abandoned God. And God has abandoned you. And God is no more speaking to you. You wake up in the morning. You cannot hear the voice of God. And during the day, just do whatever you're doing. You're not hearing from God anymore. Even when you hear the word of God being preached unto you. It doesn't make any meaning to you. You're no more living by faith. And God says, it's among the Gentiles. And I have no pleasure in him. Why? Look at verse 3. Verse 3. Israel has cast off. The thing that is good, the enemy shall pursue him. What's the thing that is good? A gentle heart, a tender heart, a soft heart, an obedient heart, a sensitive heart to the Spirit of God. When you've cast that off, and now you are just hard hearted and just, you know, just here, there, here, there, just do whatever. You are not hearing from God. You don't worry, you don't care that God is not speaking to you anymore. Israel has cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. It becomes a vessel in which 
speech when in there is no there is no pleasure. Look at verse twelve. I have reached into him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. And I told him, this is what you did. That is strange. That is strange. Build an ark. A flood is coming. That is strange. I'm reaching to him the great things of my law. They are counted as a strange thing. I cannot walk by faith anymore. And God called Abraham, go to the place. Where is it, Lord? I want to just keep on walking. That is strange. And then he cast that off. And the Lord is saying, I cannot talk to them or relate with them anymore because they count my word as strange. Take that child, Isaac, and go and sacrifice him to me. That is strange. How can I do that? And God says, I can't speak to them anymore because I'm reaching to them the great things of my law. And it will count it as a strength and come back to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 38. Now the jaw shall lay by faith. And but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back. I said, We are not of them who draw back. When people draw back, what did they draw back to? Again? Again? You know the people that draw back onto perdition, and you know you tell them this is the word of the Lord, this is the way of this is the will of the Lord, and they say I don't understand, and because they don't understand, then they draw back. They say, okay, since uh, you know the, the pastor is saying something I don't understand, I'm going to go to another church. He abandons faith. He abandons the way of God. The pastor is, you know, trying to tell me to go a particular direction. I don't understand. And because I don't understand, I'm going back away from this. But I'm not going to, I'm still going to go to church. But the church you go now, what do you hear? Nothing. Nothing. It's all shallow and superficial. You're not hearing anything. But I'm still going to church. I'm still reading my Bible. But you're not hearing from God. You have drawn back onto perdition. Until you come back to the way of faith and say, Lord, that thing I said I didn't understand, I still don't understand. But I'm going to walk by faith. Walking by faith and not by sight. That's what the Lord is calling on. That's what Daniel did in, in Babylon. He walked by faith. That's why God was with him till the end of time. And he persevered until the end. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that Believe to the saving of the soul. We're going to remain till the end in Jesus' name. I want you to come back to Daniel chapter 12. We're looking at verse 13. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. We're looking at verse 13. Daniel chapter 12. Look at verse 13. Look at the promise the Lord was given unto Daniel. Go, but go thy way till the end be. Go thy way till the end be. He said, keep on, be keep on occupied until the end. And he said, for thou, for thou shalt rest. Think about that. Number one, Daniel, you will rest. You, what does that mean? What does that mean? It means he will die. Ah, where did you see that? Look at Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. To rest, to rest, to rest. He was already now about, for about 90 years of age. And he was to rest. He was to rest. He was to die. Look at this in, the, in verse 13. In, in, in Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed at the day dead which die in the Lord from henceforth yea says the spirit that they may what? rest from their labors and their works do follow them. That's rest. That's rest. They will die. That means they will rest. Daniel go thy way for thou shalt die. Thou shalt rest. Now come back to Daniel chapter 12 verse 13. Thou shalt rest and stand in thy Lord. What's that? You will rest. You will die. You will be buried. You will rest and sleep in the dust and then you will stand. Somebody who died and now he's standing. What's that? Resurrection. Resurrection. Number one is rest. Number two is resurrection. The Lord was promising Daniel and said, you are going to rest. You are going to die. But then after that, you will stand in thy Lord. Not only that, number one is rest. Number two is resurrection. Number three is reward. You will stand in thy Lord. In thy Lord. You'll have an inheritance. You'll have a reward. And I'm going to give you that reward at the end of time, at the end of the days. The rest and the resurrection and the reward. And that's the, that's the system or that's the 
uh, that's the order that you even have in the book of Revelation. I've read about the rest in chapter 14. Look at verse chapter 20, verse 6. Chapter 20, we're looking at verse 6. In verse 6 of chapter 20 of uh, Revelation, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power, but they shall be priest of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Number one, Daniel, your rest shall die. Number two, you resurrect. You are going to be you are going to rise up from the dead. And after that, you are going to have your reward. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. And I and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. After the rest, then there is the resurrection, and then there is the reward. My reward is with me to give to every man according as his word work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, verse 13, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. And I pray that will be ours in Jesus' name. As you look at Daniel, and you look at what the Lord has revealed through Daniel, you're asking yourself about the last day, when the last day will come. If it is not death and resting in the dust of the earth, then there's going to be a rapture. And if you don't, if you are still alive, when the Lord will come, and remain saved, and remain sanctified and holy, and remain faithful unto the Lord, I pray that day you'll be qualified. When the saints go marching in, you'll be among them in Jesus' name. There'll be the resurrection of the dead, and then there'll be the reward. The Lord says He's going to reward the people that have followed Him faithfully. But the Lord is now telling us to be ready for that day when the day shall come. In Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 42. Matthew 24, verse 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. It says, Don't allow any time of carelessness. Any time of frivolity, any time of any time of unrighteousness, falling into temptation, but remain faithful unto the Lord. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Verse 44. Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? I'll be a wise servant. I'll be a faithful servant. So that when the Lord shall come. I'll be ready, you'll be ready, we'll be ready in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Now the Lord will give us wisdom, make us wise unto salvation. All these that we have heard, take it to the Lord in prayer. Now the Lord himself, the Lord himself, the Lord himself will quicken the word of God into your heart. Will not be frivolous anymore, careless anymore, will not allow familiarity with the Lord, with the Bible study, with the fellowship to bring contempt. We'll bring our hearts before the Lord sober. We'll bring our hearts before the Lord serious. We'll bring our hearts before the Lord submissive unto the Lord. Say, no, Lord, do for me everything that needs to be done. I want to be ready for the coming of the Lord. I don't want to take the Bible study for just a frivolous a kind of meeting or for just a carnal kind of meeting, for just a, a religious kind of meeting. I want to commit my heart, my life, my will, everything I've got. I want to commit to the Lord. I want to be a real serious, sincere, sub missive child of God. I don't want you, you know, just come here and live a careless life and with everything I'm hearing, still became as, become as carnal, as worldly, as um, callous as I used to be. Lord, there must be a change. There must be a change. If you have not been born again, you must be born again. Except you be born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. And except you are holy, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. The Lord is calling us to a sober moment, a sober mood that will think about our lives and think about our ways and then say, oh Lord, I want to be ready when the Lord will come. Then I live the spiritual life, a pure life, a holy life, an uncompromising life. And all through his days, he was uh, quite submissive and steadfast in the things of the Lord. And the Lord is teaching us all this so that we too can be like that and say, Lord, I bring my heart to you. I bring my life to you. Make me, Lord, what I ought to be. I don't want to be careless or callous or callous. I want to just be a real spiritual child of God, saved, sanctified, holy before the Lord. Tell the Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 
And he wants us to follow the way of the Lord, the word of the Lord, the will of the Lord, whether we understand or not, whether we understand or not, whether we understand or not. We ought to just give ourselves to and say, Lord, I don't understand everything, but Lord, I give myself to you. I want to be washed white as snow. I want to be purified. I want to be sanctified. I want to be purged. I don't want any stain or spot to be in my life. I want to be yours forever, yours fully, and yours totally and completely. It's not just a matter of understanding. Lord, lead me. Like you let those patriarchs and prophets some people of old, like Noah, like Abraham, like Isaac, like all the others. Lord, whether I understand or not, I just submit myself unto you. I don't want to copy anybody. I came alone into the kingdom. I came alone into the world. You'll go, up, you'll go out of this world alone all by yourself. And you want to tell the Lord, oh Lord, make me the kind of Christian I ought to be. The kind of child I ought to be and the kind of obedient, obedient, obedient child I ought to be. Not rebellious, not disobedient, not unrighteous. Lord, help me to be the kind of obedient and holy, submissive, righteous, sanctified child I ought to be. He will do it. He will do it. If he sees that sincerity and that desire, that passion within your soul, that desire that you really desire the Lord, your heart is following after the Lord, you want to be who he wants you to be. And you're not waiting until I understand every jot and every title. I, Lord, I just, I just want you to do this for me. You promised me your words that... You'll make me walk straight and walk righteous and walk holy and walk pure. Lord, I don't understand all the details. I saw how you're going to do it. But I know you have the power and the ability. Do it for me, Lord. Give God the glory and give God the honor. Let him do it. And preserve, preserve, preserve the word of God. Whether you understand or not, preserve it. Whether you understand or protect it. Whether you understand or not, preach it. Whether you understand or not, proclaim it, declare it. And don't be like those people that I don't understand, I don't understand, I don't understand, I don't understand. I've been watching other people, this sanctification, I've not seen that sanctification in their lives. I've not understood that sanctification in their lives. And because I don't understand, I'm not going to submit. Don't be like that. Accept it. Believe it. The prophets of all, the people of all, they didn't understand everything, but they accepted it. That's, that's the beauty of following after the Lord by faith. Not the carnal people who use their head and they knock their head against the wall. They don't understand. And they're not going to receive in their heart whatever their heart cannot understand. Their mind or their brain cannot understand. Just tell the Lord, oh Lord, I submit myself, surrender myself unto you. That every word will be to your glory. Every move will be to your glory. Every step will be to your glory. Every idea will be to your glory. Every decision will be to your glory. Every action will be to your glory in my life. I want to preserve, I want to preserve the message of righteousness, the message of restitution, the message of holiness, the message of sanctification, the message of one wife, one man, one wife, until death do them part. I want to preserve that. What about that other person? Look at what happened. The husband is, uh, you know, an addicted the person. Is this, is that. I did not free now. Don't worry about that. Just keep to the word of God. One man, one wife, until death do them part. Keep to the word. Keep to the word. Don't say, uh, because I don't understand, we have to change it. Because I don't understand, we have to modify it. Stand by the word. The prophets did not wait until they understood. They just stood by the word. They sought to understand, they sought to understand, they sought to understand. And whenever God gave them illumination, instruction, inspiration, and they understood a bit, they were grateful to God. Do like that too. Seek to understand. Seek to understand the word of God. And the one you understand, keep on obeying. The one you don't understand, keep on following. Keep on following. Keep on following. And live by faith, and live by faith, and live and walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, if any man draw back, they draw back into shallowness. They draw back into the world. They draw back into just using their brain and using their mind. They don't want to walk by faith anymore. That's too deep for them. 
They, want to, they don't want to submit anymore. That's too deep for them. And they run back. They go back into shallow life, carnal life, secular life. Just using the brain and using the mind. Walking by sight. If any man draw back, my soul will not have pleasure in him. They become vessels in whom there is no pleasure. They cast off the thing that is good. I've written unto him the great things of my law. And were counted as a strange thing. Those people that count the word of God as strange, they cannot follow the Lord anymore because their brain cannot understand. They are waiting to... They want to understand every decision the leader takes in the church. Every decision our pastors, our preachers, our overseers take before they can follow. Walking by sight. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. They draw back and they are heady. They draw back and they are stubborn. They draw back and they are shallow. They draw back and they are sensual. They draw back and they are only natural. They have left off spiritual things. Come before the Lord and say, Lord, purge me, purge me, purge me, purify me. Wash me in the blood of the Lamb. Wash me through and through. Until I'm purified and purged, made holy and sanctified. Help me to keep on following until the final time. Help me to endure till the very end. Help me to persevere until the very end. Not to get tired, not to get weary, not to be deceived by those false prophets. Help me, Lord, to be tender in my heart, submissive in my heart, yielded in my heart, giving completely unto you. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me not to forfeit my privilege in the kingdom just because I didn't understand. Help me not to fight the will of God and the decisions of leadership in the church just because I don't understand. Help me not to fight. Help me not to forget the things you are teaching me, leading me on just because I don't understand.